Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sven and I hope you're doing great. So NAB has started and of course, as we all expected, there's a new version of DaVinci Resolve. So let's get all hyped and look at the new features. The most important one in my opinion is that we finally, after asking for it for years, got a dedicated keyframe editor in the edit page. So when we click here, we see a whole new panel where all the keyframes of the currently selected clip show up. And this is somewhat similar to what you might know from Adobe Premiere, but it looks way smoother and better designed. You can switch between the keyframe mode and the spline mode where you can see and edit the exact interpolation between the keyframes. This is very similar to the editor we had in the Fusion page. Over here in keyframe mode, we can filter which keyframes should show up in the curve panel. And then also below the timeline, we can toggle this extra panel that shows the keyframes synced with the events in the timeline, which is really great. So we can edit directly on the timeline. The second most requested feature is probably a GUI layout for vertical video. And this is finally here. When the timeline resolution is set to vertical, the GUI changes slightly and makes room for a vertical viewer. You can see this one on the cut and edit pages, as well as the color page. And this is incredibly helpful for content for social media. Speaking of the color page, there are some new and improved tools. First of all, let's talk about the improvements. The Magic Mask got an update that just improves the quality of the masks. You don't have to draw strokes now, you just click on an element you want to select. If you want to refine the mask, you can do so with the painting tools over here in the palette. Here you can paint in or erase sections of the mask. But note that those paint strokes, however, only last one frame and do not affect the tracking of your magic mask. But also the selections are just way more detailed and high quality. But you can also switch to the legacy mode over here in the tool settings to be compatible with old projects. The depth map as well has been updated and now features a way more accurate model. It now generates maps with more detail and less flickering than before. If you still want to use the old model, you can simply switch the quality mode to faster instead of better. And then there are new grading tools like the new Color Warper model, Chroma Warp. This is a way smoother model than the Color Warper, which was already quite powerful but could easily introduce noise and breakage. The Chroma Warp feature is based on way cleaner color models and allows you to drastically shift colors to different hues. You can modify the influence of a selected color range and pinpoint neighboring colors so they don't move as well. This looks really promising as a look building tool, but also for surgical corrections, and I will try it out way more in the upcoming weeks. And finally, there is support for Aces 2.0. So what's new? I just released a video about Aces in general the other day, so make sure to watch this one as well so you can fully appreciate the new version. The main problems we had with Aces before version 2 was the very strong contrast in the reference rendering transform and sometimes strange looking hue shifts and saturation related issues. But the Aces community has worked on a new set of ODTs the last few years and now released them with Aces 2.0, which is now available in Resolve 20. And by the way, there are also a lot of new ODTs like Display P3. The new ODTs have a way more filmic and aesthetically pleasing contrast rendering and also treat highly saturated colors way nicer. Just look at the new version compared to the old version. And this is big in my opinion, as it will make more people enjoy working with Aces. And as we said in the last video, this just helps collaborative workflows immensely. Besides Aces, Resolve now also supports OCIO color pipelines, which is also great, as this is an open source platform that is also available in many popular softwares and is widely used as an alternative for Aces by many people. Another thing that we can do in the Deliver page of DaVinci Resolve is that we can now rearrange render jobs. And lastly, a small but in my opinion very helpful thing is the improved cache management. You can set up the preferences here so it deletes render cache after a given amount of time. This way your hard drives don't get filled with unnecessary files anymore. So these are just a quick selection of some of my favorite tools in the new version of Resolve. I'm going to spend way more time on these features in the next few weeks to fully test them and find out ways how they could be useful in my workflows. So thank you for watching. As always, as this is still a beta version, please give it some time until you upgrade especially if you're currently working on a project. But let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite feature. And until then, I will see you in the next video.